Data availability is a term that has been popping up lately around scaling cryptocurrencies. In fact, some chains are now looking at it as one of the most important aspects of a cryptocurrency. Celestia, for example, have based their entire chain around maximizing it, and Ethereum with dank sharding will do the same. But what exactly is it? At its core, it's extremely simple. It's simply, as the name suggests, how much data does a chain make available for users to download? For the vast majority of cryptocurrencies, it is extremely simple. The amount of data that is made available is simply the block size, as all nodes in the network will download blocks, so whatever data you can fit into a block is the data that was made available for anyone to download. The reason people started talking about it more is due to rollups. Rollups allow a cryptocurrency to take some state and have potentially highly powerful centralized rollup nodes process all the transactions for this state. Even though the rollup nodes may not be trustworthy, when they post updates of the state back to their settlement layer, they also include some sort of proof that the update is valid, like a fraud or validity proof. Due to these proofs, you can trust the state updates from the rollup, even if the rollup nodes are malicious, as if they were to try anything malicious, the proofs wouldn't be valid. However, the problem is that the settlement layer doesn't actually know any of the state that the rollup is managing. All the settlement layer stores is a commitment to the state in the form of a Merkle root. For the state they are managing, the rollup nodes are the only ones who know what everyone's balances are. If they go offline or refuse to share any data, then no one will know what funds they have. So if they were to shut down without sharing this data, everyone's balances would be lost. The way to solve this problem is to simply make sure that the rollup nodes are making the data available for anyone who wants to download and know the state themselves. Then, if the rollup nodes do shut down, there should be other people who can recreate everyone's balances and either withdraw funds from the rollup by producing Merkle proofs that match the Merkle root from the settlement layer, or starting up their own replacement rollup nodes if the software is open source. So ensuring rollup nodes make data available is extremely important for keeping users' funds secure. The most secure way to ensure that rollups are making this data available is by having the rollups include the data in blocks when they post their state updates. This means that all nodes in the settlement layer will have downloaded this data, so they know it's definitely available. If you had a rollup to a normal cryptocurrency, this is how you would do it. However, the only thing nodes want to know is if the rollups have made the data available. They don't actually want to download and store the data for the rest of time, as that uses up a lot of storage and bandwidth. It's just that that is the simplest way to implement it currently. This is why projects like Celestia and Ethereum with dank sharding have started to use methods like erasure coding, along with data sampling, to create a way for nodes to be able to confirm that rollups have made all their data available without each node needing to download all the data themselves. Instead, the combination of erasure coding, along with sampling the data, allows nodes to be statistically confident of the data being available without them having to download it all. Ethereum with proto dank sharding will also introduce a new data type called a data blob, which will be cheaper to use as nodes only need to store data blobs for 30 days. Nodes are only interested that rollup nodes have made the data available, they don't need to store it for the rest of time, so data blobs should make rollups much cheaper on Ethereum once implemented. So ultimately, data availability is important because rollups need to make the data from their state updates available for anyone to download. The more data availability a settlement layer can verify, the more transactions the rollups can include in their state updates, so the more transactions the ecosystem in general can handle. To conclude, there are generally four bottlenecks for blockchains, the processing, memory, storage, and bandwidth of the nodes. If you scale a blockchain using rollups, you can offload processing and memory to the rollup nodes, so they can be removed as bottlenecks. Storage is less of a problem, because you only need one honest person to store the data, and due to all the data being in Merkle trees, it's easy to verify if someone is sharing valid data with you or not, so also isn't really a bottleneck. The final bottleneck is bandwidth, which is needed to verify data availability. If you can scale verifying data availability without having to increase the node's bandwidth requirements, then you can start to build a truly scalable and secure ecosystem using rollups, which is what Celestia and Ethereum have started to do. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to catch my future content.